The picture grows clear with each and every result. In the AFC, at least. NFC, different conversation, and we'll have that one come Sunday. As for the AFC, only one team remains in the hunt. That's the Jags. Big time matchup against Tennessee and plenty of people sitting and waiting for that result. With the win, the Jags would claim the South, bumping the Texans into the wild card, but still in the playoff picture due to their win on Saturday. The Bills and Steelers sitting there without guarantees. It's all going to play out. You'll be with us right here on HQ. All right, let's explore some of those possibilities. Bryant McFadden back in the mix. John Breach joining the conversation as well. Fellas, an exciting Saturday, and what a Sunday we have out in front of us here. Let's start right there with this Houston team punching their ticket. Now, it's either a wild card or it's a division title. Either way, impressive yes. behind a rookie quarterback and a first-year head coach. Breach, your impressions here of what Houston has been able to accomplish already, however Sunday and beyond goes down. You you walk away feeling what about the Houston Texans this season? Oh yeah, absolutely. If they went into the wild card round and lost 57 to nothing, you still give them an A plus for this season. What they have accomplished has been nothing short of amazing. I think we saw their preseason Super Bowl odds at 200 to one. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an absurd number. This team had low expectations. Nobody thought that they were going to come in and compete for the division title, something they still might win. DJ Stroud has been playing out of his mind. I mean, starting off the Saturday night game against the Colts with a 75-yard touchdown pass, set the tone for this Texans win. And D'Amico Ryans has been quite the coach. I don't think he's getting enough chatter for a coach of the year, considering what he has done with that organization. So, yeah, this has been an absolute success for the Texans, no matter what happens from here on out. Mac, there is a changing of expectation and belief in Houston right now. We yep. are seeing it happen before our very eyes, thanks to that quarterback and that head coach and all of the pieces around them. You flip that switch from regular season to postseason. Now knowing in that room for Houston that they are a playoff team, what is the next step here in these next few days to get into that playoff mindset. Uh, keep, keep, uh, keep the main thing the main thing, right? Play with a sense of urgency, understanding and knowing in the playoffs, the, the margin of error is very, very small. So the, f the vibe that we witnessed tonight has to continue for them. Mm -hmm. And what we witnessed throughout the entire season, season with their quarterback, C.J. Stroud, was smart football, right? No turnovers once again tonight against the Indianapolis Colts, two touchdowns, almost 300 yards. He has to continue to play with that same mentality. That's mm -hmm. why he's been so amazing this year. It's not about the yards that he's been able to throw, the touchdowns. It's about protecting the football. Because when you get into playoff football, turnovers count, one turnover count is two. Because it's hard to overcome those things. Mm -hmm. So if he understands and continues to play with that same mindset, and of course defensively, just become more of an opportunistic group, they're dealing with a lot of injuries, and clearly that's going to be an issue because they won't be that much more healthier next week. But they've got to find ways to get timely stops. You know, play better football in the red zone, limit teams to, feel, uh, to, 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 to attempt their field goals and not touchdowns. They should be okay, but as I mentioned, when you talk about playoff football, Joe, one turnover, it feels like it's two turnovers. Those are rules that come from the crucible of Steeler playoff football learning here from our Bryant McFadden, and that crucible also alive maybe not well but alive the Steelers with their win keeping the playoff hopes alive now I knew one person at least rooting for a tie here in Houston Indy because that would have <laughs> punched the ticket on a Saturday for the Steelers right. that doesn't come to pass so the Steelers need either a loss from Buffalo or a loss from Jacksonville another team rooting against the Jags right. on Sunday Mac but as you look at your beloved squad and what the business they were able to take care of here on Saturday to keep that hope alive how does this team project forward I mean we sat there and said, there's no way this is a 10-win team. There's no way that all they went through, this is a playoff team. Are you starting to get a little bit more acquainted with that thought, that idea? Yeah, no question. There's hope. You know, there's hope. I feel like this team weeks ago was hopeless. Mm -hmm. Losing to the New England Patriots, losing to the Arizona Cardinals, losing to the Indianapolis Colts. Now there's hope. And the reason why they have, there's hope, because they have a quarterback. You know, one thing I know about the game of football, I don't care what level you're playing on. If you don't have a quarterback, the field feels like it's 150 yards. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like you have to do to drive, 150 instead of 100. Now, when you have quarterback play, I mean, it makes things easier 
they're easier. They're, they're, it's easy to watch them offensively because you believe they can go with, go with it where they need to go to put points on the scoreboard. So if they can get into the playoffs, the sense of urgency that we've witnessed with this ball club over the last three ball games, especially since Mason Rudolph has become the starter, it gives you a reason to feel like, yo, we can get it done. Mm -hmm. And all I know about NFL, NFL playoffs, when you get in, anything can happen. You just got to make sure you have a seat. But when you find out you have a seat, there's no telling where you can go. We were sitting there trying to figure out where that seat might be on the table yeah. if it does go right for Pittsburgh, either a trip to Miami, Buffalo, or Kansas, Kansas City. City. And you were talking to me about Kansas. That's not where yeah. I'm going to ask you here, John. <laughs> but I, I do wonder from where you're sitting, when you look at this Pittsburgh team and what they were able to accomplish here on Saturday, what's the more likely path in when you look at those two possibilities, a Buffalo loss or the Jacksonville loss or tie? I think it would be the Jacksonville loss. I, I, if you're I, a Steelers fan, certainly. I am paying attention to at 1 p.m. That's where I'm locked <laughs> into my television. That's where I'm turning the TV on and be, I'm buying a Titans hat and buying a Titans jersey. <laughs> Get my Ryan Tannehill socks out. I am going absolutely crazy. Look, the Titans, their record has not been great, obviously, but they've played in quite a few one-score games. Mike Brable's team is always prepared. The defense always looks pretty good. Uh, and they don't get blown out too often. They can stay in games. We also know that Trevor Lawrence is pretty beat up. We don't even know for sure if he's going to play. But if he does play, uh, he barely practiced all week. So that seems like more of a game where the Jags are just right for an upset. So obviously, craziness can happen on Sunday night, and the Dolphins could win that game. But I just think if that ends up being essentially a playoff game for Buffalo and the Dolphins have already clinched a playoff spot, which they have, uh, the, the Buffalo's going to be playing with their backs against the wall. So I, I just think the Titans probably have a little bit better shot of winning uh, on Sunday than the Dolphins do against the Bills. You got your foam finger? You got yeah. Your, you got your Titans foam finger? You ready to rock? I'm ready to rock. <laughs> we'll I hope see. you got yours too because we cheering. Everybody I know cheering for the Titans. We'll see if Raves and company can pull that off for BMAC and a different company. Yeah. We got to be zeroed in on that final game of the regular season as well. I mean, Dolphins, mm. Bills, division on the line, scheduling God smiling upon us here. Breach, as you take a look at this matchup, a, a lot of what I'm seeing when I sit down and sort of project what I expect to see out of Buffalo is a similar game plan that the Ravens put up umpteen points against this Miami defense. A little bit of run first, very physical, effective pass. How does Miami ensure that they don't get bullied the way they did a week ago? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say because Miami's really struggled. We obviously saw what happened uh, against the Ravens and look they've struggled against the Bills they've lost 10 of 11 they haven't been able to figure out how to stop Josh Allen who's had multiple touchdown passes against them I think in 10 or 11 straight games it's it's a wild number and then you look at the fact you throw in the fact that the Bills can now run the ball that's something they weren't really doing at the beginning of the season unless it was Josh Allen running around but now James Cook has emerged over the past month and a half and that offense is even more difficult to stop. So uh, I think the Dolphins just need to focus on stopping Josh Allen because he has been the guy who has beaten you. He has been the guy who's been dissecting up that defense. Uh, so you try and slow down Josh Allen. And then, hey, if James Cook runs for 175 yards and two touchdowns, but the Bills score uh, less than 24 points, that's fine. I just don't think you can let Josh Allen beat you. So I do think that needs to be Miami's focus. We'll see if Miami can get out there and maybe dictate the pace with that high-powered passing game, but that will surely need to be in tow if they want to move on as a division winner. John Breach, Bryant McFadden, appreciation, fellas. All right, here's a look at what it would be if it ended today. Ravens get a bye. We're not going to see Lamar for 20 days. Maybe we have that conversation at another time, but 20 days without live action for Lamar. We know he'll be rested. We know he'll be healthy. We just don't know if it'll look like 2019. It would be Steelers and Dolphins, Bills and Chiefs, Browns and Texans, but all can be changed by Jacksonville's results tomorrow against the Titans.